In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the setup and install of some of AOTech's Z-Wave devices and how we can use them with Home Assistant to save ourselves power, money and space. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Once again, Brian from Automate Your Life has challenged myself and a bunch of other content creators to save energy by making use of some cool smart home products as part of the ongoing energy challenge that's being run by the guys over at If This Then That. This time around, we're taking a look at some of the tech that's available by AOTech. And if you are interested in any of these products or interested in how you can take part in the energy challenge yourself, then you'll find links to all of these things in the description below. If you've never heard of AOTech, they're a company that create a range of different smart home products, mainly ones that are Z-Wave and Zigbee based, and a lot of them focus on the smart things ecosystem, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're just for that system. They do work with lots of other smart homes, and they also provide dongles and other attachments to allow you to make use of other open source platforms, such as Home Assistant and a bunch of others. For this video, I'm obviously gonna be focusing on Home Assistant, but the devices that I'm gonna be using are all Z-Wave based, or Z-Wave, 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 let me know what you say in the comments below. In order to get the devices into Home Assistant, I'm gonna to need to make use of a Z-Wave dongle. And the dongle that I've opted to use is actually AOTech's own Z-Stick 7. And if you happen to be familiar with any of AOTech's products, then you'll know that this dongle is actually the successor to the very popular Gen 5 Plus series dongle. And what's nice about this new dongle is the fact that it's actually 76% smaller. And this thing is actually tiny and it also features S2 encryption, which is part of the Z-Wave Series 700 standard. By default, this dongle comes preloaded with the Z-Wave 700 series firmware, and there is actually a bug in that firmware, so I would highly recommend you update it before you carry on with using this dongle in Home Assistant. If you're not sure what firmware version you're on, the simplest way to check it is to just head into your Z-Wave integration, and if you've got a little error message telling you to update the firmware, then you should probably do that. If you're not sure how to actually update, then check the link in the description below because I've created a simple video that shows you how to update the firmware on this dongle. And this will actually also work for any of the other popular Z-Wave 700 dongles too. The first device that we're gonna be having a look at is the Multisensor 7. Inside the box, you'll find the main sensor unit itself, as well as some mounting accessories and a USB-A to USB micro cable, but more on that cable in just a second. The Multisensor 7 is a 700 series sensor, and as its name would suggest, it features multiple sensors. Inside this device, you'll find sensors for motion, light, vibration, humidity, temperature, and UV. That's a whole bunch of sensors all crammed into one tiny little device, so already it's saving us space. We're not having to have lots of different sensors all over the place, they're all just crammed into this neat little package. Price-wise, this thing retails for around £67. Now, that does sound like it's a lot for one individual sensor, but if you think about it, for this sensor, you're getting six different sensors, so you're saving the cost of having to buy each of those individually. So already, that's a significant saving, just having it in one device. If six sensors all crammed into one little package wasn't cool enough, then this thing actually has another secret hidden trick. You may remember that I mentioned that there was a USB cable included in the packaging, well, the reason for that is because you can actually power this thing directly from a USB cable. This sensor is battery powered, but if you remove the batteries, you'll actually find a micro USB port inside. And with that port, you can power the device, meaning it can be mains powered and it will permanently have power. This really is a genius thing to do because I haven't actually seen that many smart home sensors that allow you to do this, where it can be battery based or mains powered. What's nice about being able to actually power it by the USB is the fact that this isn't unique to this specific product. This is actually a reoccurring theme across AOTech's range. So with a lot of AOTech sensors, you can either power it with battery, power it with a rechargeable battery, or optionally just power it straight from that USB. And it's really nice to see this and I do wish that other companies would just employ this. Connecting the multi-sensor to Home Assistant is an absolute breeze. In my case, I'm making use of Z-Wave JS, so it's just a simple case of clicking add device. Then with the sensor, you just need to put the batteries in, press the action button on the back, and then the device will instantly connect to Z-Wave JS. With the multi-sensor 7, you are required to enter a pairing code, and you can find this code on the back plate of the device, and once you enter that code, you're good to go. The next device that I'm using to help save energy around my home is the Walmart Quad. 
The Walmart Quad is another Z-Wave product, and this time it's a four button scene controller. On the front of the device when you activate it, you'll see this LED cross appear, and that kind of divides up all of the four buttons that you can press. Each one of those buttons is a capacitive button, and whenever you press on the device, you'll actually get haptic feedback to let you know where you press the button, so you can feel which one you actually pressed, even though you're not physically clicking anything. And you also get a nice auditory tone, again, just to confirm that you actually pressed the button. Inside the box, you'll find the wall moat, a magnetic backing plate, which already has 3M tape attached to it, and a USB-A to USB micro cable. So just like with the Multisensor 7, this device can be powered with that USB cable, but unlike the Multisensor 7, this device actually has an internal battery, so you only actually need to power this one whenever the battery's low or it just needs charging. Pairing this device with Home Assistant is also just an absolute breeze. Again, you'll just need to click Add Device in your Z-Wave controller. Then on the back of the wall mode, there's a button that you can press to enter pairing mode, and the two just pair up with no pairing code needed. With the wall mode in Home Assistant, you're able to make use of each of the four buttons using single press actions. You can also make use of press and hold actions, but I wasn't able to get any triple click or double click actions working, so I'm not sure if they're just not supported or they just don't work in Home Assistant. As well as being able to make use of button presses for automations, you also get access to some nice sensors for the battery. So the sensors that will tell you if the device is charging, if it needs charging, what the state is, whether it needs to be charged now this second or not. And it's nice that those are actually all individual sensors. So you can just tie those to some nice automations, especially if you're going to be using this thing wirelessly. I do wish there were some controls for being able to actually turn the LED on and off or even being able to adjust the color of it and also for the sound. Currently, at least using Home Assistant and Z-Wave JS, you're not able to control the speaker or the LED on the wall mode, which would actually be quite nice if you could. If you could control the LED, you might wanna turn it off or on based on the time of day, or maybe you wanna actually set a specific color for the LED, maybe for some form of notification. And the same with the speaker, it'd be nice if you could control it, maybe if you could adjust the sound or maybe just turn it off altogether. I know that with the device itself, if you press and hold two buttons on the, the actual wall mode itself, you can actually disable the sound totally, but that's physical and I want a little control to just press it and turn it off. <laughs> so those were the devices that I was testing out, but before I actually started including them in my automations, I did do some testing of the devices just to check that the sensors were all reliable and accurate and that they were all doing what I wanted them to do. With the Multisensor 7, I was happy that all of the sensors worked well enough, but the only ones that I couldn't really test or couldn't reliably test were UV and Illuminance. With the UV, I couldn't really test this out because it's pretty much always raining here in Wales, but I'm not actually sure what I'd use UV for anyway. Maybe you could use it to bring your blinds down to block some UV out if it was a really UV day. Is, is that the thing, if it's a UV day? Illuminance was another one where I couldn't actually reliably get it to work. Sometimes it would update fine and other times it would seem to be really delayed. So I wasn't confident that it would do everything that I wanted it to do. As part of my testing with the Multisensor 7, I did try powering the device and I don't know if this is correct or not, but with the device being powered, the Illuminance seemed to work more reliably than it did when it was on battery. And this could be because maybe the device has power and it's awake. It makes sense when you say it, but I'm not sure if this is case. I'm going to have to check this one with Aotech. Just to quickly jump in, I did have a quick check, and if you do power the device with a USB instead of just using batteries, then the sensors do update a lot quicker, which kind of makes sense. Also, if you're making use of a hub such as Aotech's own hub, then you actually get full access to all the configuration for all of the sensors. So you can do things like adjusting the motion sensitivity, adjusting time delays, and lots of other environmental factors that affect the sensor, you can change them. You can actually view the same configuration inside of Home Assistant by just selecting the device you want and choosing configuration. From here, you can then adjust the values, but you can't actually view or control them as set controls on the device. So you will need to be in the configuration menu in order to make these adjustments. The vibration sensor in the multi-sensor works well. If you touch it or move it, you get a tamper notification. And if you bang around or knock on the wall or tap the door, wherever you've got this thing placed, it will trigger it. So if you wanted to, you could use that as a trigger as well. 
Both the temperature and humidity were also giving out results that I would expect. I tested the sensor out next to existing sensors that I'm already using in my house and they were reading the exact same as what some of those other sensors would be using. So I was happy that this one was also working well. The Walmart Quad has just worked as expected. You press the button and it will do its thing or you press and hold and it will also do its thing. So I've been very impressed with how it actually works. I really also like the fact that it's got that magnetic back on it so if you wanted to you could stick it around in multiple places and because it's got that whole wireless setup to it and you can recharge it if you wanted to you could carry it from room to room although I'm not sure that you'd actually carry this little thing around with you but if you wanted to you could. This would now be the part of the video where I run through some of the automations that I've been using the devices in but I haven't actually yet included them in my testing and in my automations, but I do have some ideas for you for how you could use these in your own home, and I guess that counts. That counts, doesn't it, Brian? Brian? Brian, that counts. The reason I've not yet included these in some of my automations is just purely because I've been testing out a whole bunch of AOTech devices. I've actually really gotten into using Z-Wave, and I've gotten lots of different devices, which you probably will see on the channel in a future update. Things like weather sensors and other little gadgets and gizmos, but we'll save that for another day. If I was to make use of the Multisensor 7 in my own automations, then some of the most obvious ones are things like using the motion sensor to just have the lights turn off if there's no motion in a set room for a set period of time. Expanding on this, if I was to use that automation here in my office, I'd actually make use of some of the other sensors. So I could take the light sensor and also the temperature sensor, and if I've got a high light level and a set temperature and also motion, then it's going to assume that I'm here in my office working. And while I'm here in my office, I want those lights to be on, but I don't want the temperature to go above a set level. So if the radiator suddenly turns on and the temperature changes, then I'd have that automatically turn off just so that it stays nice and cool here in my office. I'd also do a similar thing, which is the reverse of that automation. So if there's no motion in the office, but the lights are on and the computer's on and all the other little bits are on, then I'd have these things shut down and I'd also have the radiator turn off because again, I like it cold in the office. That automation idea isn't just tied to this room specifically. I could take it and apply it to another room and maybe just change it a little bit and do something like if there's not been motion in a room for a set period of time and the temperature is starting to rise, then I could just have that radiator just turn off totally because nobody's in the room and nobody's making use of it. I could also then close any blinds or curtains in that room to just help retain the heat that's actually in there. The Walmo is a great little scene controller and because you've got the four different buttons and different actions that you can assign to it, you can assign different home assistant scenes or different scripts to each of the button presses and a nice automation idea for using something like this would be to just have this placed by a door and then on your way out of that set room or set area you could press one of the buttons which could trigger something like an eco scene or in case if it's night time you could press a button and have all of the devices in that set area or all of the devices downstairs just all turn off. Because we're using Home Assistant to control these two devices, we're not restricted to just that set device ecosystem or even to that set protocol. So any of the actions that we want these devices to do can control services and devices from different manufacturers and different protocols entirely. Those are just a quick couple of automation ideas that I've had to make use of these devices. But if you've got a cool energy saving automation that you'd write if you had these devices, then let me know what it is in the comments below and I may actually feature it in a video where I run through some more of Aotech's products. And there we go guys, that's been a little look at how I've saved some energy by making use of some of Aotech's Z-Wave devices. A massive thank you to Brian for inviting me to the challenge and again if you want to know more about the energy challenge then be sure to check out that link in the description. And while you're down there, if you're not already, don't forget to drop me a like and if you're not already, hit the subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell you'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, then definitely consider checking out Patreon or YouTube members and you can help me out and help me create more content like this. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.